I gave you an assignment in the last hour. How did you do? Well, let's test it. I ask you to study Romans 12, 1 and 2 using the five steps of interpretation. The first of which is content. Now, the first thing we need to do is to relate this passage to the book. And you may know that the book of Romans has the theme of the righteousness of God. And it breaks open into three major divisions. Chapters 1 through 8 are theological. They're doctrinal. They provide the foundation. Chapters 9, 10, and 11 are dispensational. They ask the crucial question, how does all of this relate to the Jew? And beginning at chapter 12, going through chapter 16, is the practical section relating all of this truth to the life that you live, and it penetrates some very practical areas. But what has always intrigued me is how does the practical section begin? And the answer is in these two verses. So let's look at the content just briefly. Notice he begins with, I urge you. So I'm forced to ask, why does he use that term? Why doesn't he say, I com command you? After all, he is an apostle. But you see, he's got a concern, compassion. You can feel his heart beating as he gives this exhortation. The urgency of it, it's not optional, it's essential. And then he gives an interesting word, present. What does that mean? Well, if you look it up in a concordance, you will discover that Mary and Joseph in Luke chapter 2 presented, same word, the child, the infant Jesus in the temple, dedicating him. Romans 6 and verse 15, Paul says, don't present your bodies to sin, but present it to God because you are alive in Jesus Christ. And what does he want you to present? Your body. That embraces your total person. It's your instrument. It's the only thing you have that you can give to God. So be very careful what you do with your body and how you treat it. And he calls it a living sacrifice. Well, if it's a sacrifice, how could it be living? Very simple distinction. Glad you asked. Because you are not presenting a dead animal, you are presenting a live person. And persons have a way of crawling off the altar. What about the context? Well, notice it begins with therefore. So you always ask, whenever you see a therefore, stop to see what it's there for. This is connection. By the mercies of God. That is, the whole first 11 chapters become the basis for which he makes this appeal. What about comparison? Well, notice right in the text in verse 2, he says, there's a negative and there's a positive. Don't be conformed to this world. Why would he say that? Because if you go back to chapter 8, we are told that we have been predestined to be conformed, same word, to the image of Christ. And you're either conformed to Christ or you're conformed to the world. They're diametrically opposed one to the other. How does that take place? The positive side. Be transformed. It's the same word by the renewing of your minds. The same word that's used for metamorphosis. It's the change that takes place between the worm and the butterfly. You are totally transformed when you make this presentation on the basis of your salvation. The culture, not as prominent in this passage, but you need to have a background, as his readers did, of animal sacrifice. Now he's using this as a metaphor, just as in the Old Testament they presented an animal to God. Now they are presenting their body themselves. And finally, there is consultation. That's why I'm sure many of you took out a book from your library, looked up Romans, and examined it. 
And some of you came up with some incredible insights concerning this passage. That's why you want to build a good library if you're going to be a good Bible student. Make sure you get these dictionaries and atlases and all a concordance, every tool available, more available to us today than in the history of the church. We are the blessed people. We stand on the shoulders of hundreds of scholars and students of the scripture. And don't minimize that. The key is the order. First the text, then secondary sources. You see, so often I see students writing a commentary, but they don't even have a copy of the text in front of them. They're using all kinds of excellent sources, but it's this book that we are studying. And I want to make sure I am a master of the book and that the book, in turn, is mastering me.